I think it would be fair to say that in the last few days, Chadwick has seen some massive improvements. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. Time for a quick recap of where we are. In the previous couple of videos, it became apparent that this helix was too steep and that some of my weaker locos were having trouble getting up it. And in last week's video, I tried bullfrog snot um, with limited success, let's say. So since then, what I've done is I've compressed these layers um, by round about um, a quarter of an inch each layer or in new money about six millimeters. Now the way I constructed this over at DCC train automation was to use a little jig. So in its construction as you add the next layer you just simply use the jig to give you the right spacing between the layers. This is the new jig and as I mentioned it's six mil shorter than the previous one. A couple of days ago I had a message from a guy called Dave, codenamed DakDak, who's a valued supporter of the channel. And Dave mentioned that he'd spotted on an American model railway channel this little beastie here. It's a digital spirit level. Now when I put it on the layout, you start working your way around and adjusting the height so that you get round about a two degree rise as you work your way around, which all seems sort of straightforward, until you get to this area here. The problem is here, the base measurements were wrong. So what was happening was the loco would come along and of course come along the normal um, incline but when it would hit this area here, it would start to rise considerably and then flatten back out. Of course, these distances were absolutely identical. So the error then went up from level to level. So if I add the spirit level onto this level and we can see it comes in at 1.99 degrees. And if I take it to the next section, you will be astonished to see that it's 3.64. Hence all the low codes were struggling as soon as they came through this area. I'm sorry, I'm getting my percentages mixed up with my degrees. As you can see, this is coming in at just over uh, 2%. And if I change modes on this and go into degrees, which is a 1.2 degree rise as opposed to 2%. <laughs> Dave. I'm eternally grateful. You're a lifesaver. Thank you very much indeed. One thing to watch now, of course, is now I've done the adjustments, is obviously this space is somewhat limited. Um, so you've just got to watch. You haven't got any monster um, sized trains, or at least I have, because I've got this five, five millimeter um, track bed in here. But it's just something to be aware of. But as you're about to see, it's working. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you hit the little bell icon and go for all then you get a notification every time i release a new video so here once more is my troublesome steam loco and if i send it up the helix at speed 100 as i have done previously we can see how she fares Now clearly it slows down because of the incline and of course you'll always bleed power in the curve but without prolonging the agony much further it will get eventually to the top. Hooray! And the other test train was this Backman warship with 10 coaches and we send this one up at speed 50.
and clearly once more. They lose speed, but it can certainly get up there without the wheel spinning. It's worth noting here the head clearance between the, uh, the decks on the Helix. There isn't a huge amount. And rather this one coming to such an abrupt halt. <laughs> well, it did after all. I've mentioned in the past about problems with couplings and here's an ideal example of it, the way they ride over each other if you start to push uh, trains down the helix. So I shall now fit one more circuit on top of the helix and then we shall look at uh, joining up to the other side. And putting an extra layer on the helix, as I'm sure you've seen in the previous video, it's just quite agricultural really, with bits of uh, uh, nine mil ply um, with the track bed in place, and it's a case of getting them into the right place, getting you can have enough clamp. You can't have enough clamps, I found in this game, but getting them into place. And with this um, Gorilla wood glue, it dries in about 30 minutes, so it's not as if you're waiting there all day. Then it's a case of fitting the track and the track bed and I've put the, um, the DCC Concepts power base back in but let's not forget about getting the angles right. This is something you really shouldn't try at home but I need you to pop in just to route the cables properly um, to get the top level of the helix wired up and, and the cables running alongside the others. Well that's the added level on top of the helix complete although it isn't wired in just yet but now I really need to change my view to up onto the viaduct and we need to work out how we're going to get the track from this edge of the viaduct of course down onto the helix and of course the, the uh, angle of the slope involved. So because of this last week I thought I'd make a mock-up so I got a couple of offcuts of ply and placed them in place with the angles um, as forecast running down towards the helix and also up towards what's potentially Barnstable Station. But once they're in place you realise how severe these angles really are and once I put the coaching stock on there it really showed up that these weren't realistic angles whatsoever. So I needed to sort out the new angles and this is the way forward. So what I thought I would use is this Black & Decker laser leather and if I hold it in position so that the laser scribes on the, the uh, track bed and then the other end of this laser bears onto this piece of timber. So here's the line from the laser. And from track bed to track bed it's about 48 millimeters, well let's call it 50, which is two inches. So we've really got a uh, 50 mil or two inch fall from there to here that we need to sort out now, a gentle rise up as we go uh, up towards the viaduct board. Now one worry I have had is um, the track curving downwards, it runs both down to there and also up towards the station. Uh, I think some people will call it a vertical curve. Anyway, so what I've done is I've installed this large block and it's very rigid being bolted through um, to the rest of this framework. So we can then use the natural bend in the ply to get it to run down to the helix and then up towards the station. So this piece here will be parallel with there and then the tracks will start to curve off gradually. So if I now offer up a piece of 9mm ply and pop it into place, as luck would have it there's a cross member there which will allow me to put up a support for when this piece joins the next piece. And what I can do now is I can draw out the direction uh, roughly of where this track will take um, and then cut up the board here to allow these two uh, tracks to split and allow a bit of bend to come into the boards. Now with the tracks in place I'd thought about 
cutting this board on this line. But when I think about it, that um, rather than this, this just slopes straight away again, I might need some infrastructure here. And this is an ideal place for a signal box um, for this set of points. And obviously the signals that are gonna come out of the station and also um, to and from uh, the helix. So what I shall do is I shall actually just cut the board off square and then cut the V out there to allow the boards to start to flex. Well, I've done a bit more trimming. I made that one much, much uh, bigger. So when, uh, when these flex, I have more to fill in. Um, I've left this one intact. I've just put a cut along there and I've put some screws in, four in each row, ready to go into those timbers that, if you remember, are underneath. So I should just whack this in and then hopefully, um, it's, a, it's a temporary measure, but at least we'll be able to build from here. That could have been dangerous. Just a sec. My wife. <sighs> Beautiful. So it's now time to work out the angle of this incline running from there down into the helix and measuring it, it's um, roughly 84 inches, which is uh, 2130 in millimeters in new money. So 84 inches. And we said it was a, a two inch drop, so it must be a one in 42. And I know that a one in 42 is a 2.3% fall. One in 42, I think we're good to go. All my trains can get up a one in 42. So now's the time to build that track bed. This section here must be more difficult to construct than the other end. So I thought I'd start at this end first and the bed of the helix is made of six mil ply. So I'd like ideally to come off here in six mil ply. Now it might seem logical to use the same stuff that the helix is constructed um, from, but that would give you an S bend. And that's a dreadful thing in model railway terms because you're gonna get buffer lock. And that's where one set of buffers gets inside of the other set of buffers on the, on the uh, wagon behind it. And it just, it causes so many derailments. So I can't risk having buffer lock, so I can't use this. Excuse me. <coughs> However, what I can do is something like this. Now, this is made of MDF, medium density fiberboard. It's, um, it's a product made by the devil. It is something to be avoided at all costs, but we're in lockdown and I cannot get my hands on any six mil ply because I'm not allowed out to play. So what I thought I would do is use this, um, coat it in PVA on all the sides and all the joins, and then bolster it up with some timber so it doesn't warp. Now, if I pop the tracks into place where I kind of envisage they will go, and they will kind of sit like that, once more there will be this underlay will go onto this piece of MDF. And then what I shall do is bolster the MDF up with um, two pieces of timber, sort of one on each side, so you can kind of get the idea from that, so that the MDF doesn't warp. And then we can think about jumping from uh, six mil MDF into nine mil ply, so we'll have to do some little bit of jiggery pokery when we join these two together. So that's the current plan, so I shall whack up this piece of uh, material here, the MDF with, with the boards, and, uh, and then move on from there. Well, I've now installed the first T-piece at the viaduct end and I've screwed the incline into that block. As you can see, the little spirit level is giving me 2.25%. I'm aiming for 2.3, so um, I don't think we'll get to we'll lose any sleep over that. But now I need to move over to the next section. So what I thought I would do is put the next block, as you can see, over on the right hand side, then use a spirit level to see if our levels are within tolerance. So putting the spirit level across those two. 2.3, spot on. So now I need to just fit one, well, need to screw that one in and then fit another two. I 
and in next to no time it's just a case of cutting the 9mm ply to shape and then screwing it in place. And now turning back to the helix end, there's a piece of MDF um, that I covered in PVA and put a couple of battens on to strengthen it up and it pops in like that, in there like that. Now on the helix all these joints are glued but I'm certainly not going to glue this one in here um, in, in case I need to take this out because all this is going to be a temporary measure because I may need to get in there and sort out the run to the station but what I do want to do is get this in and clamped um, connect it up and obviously um, see if the uh, incline works okay for running trains so it's just a case of putting it in there temporarily and uh, whacking a couple of screws in so now all we have to do is construct one more piece to go from here and join up to the helix um, yes yeah, so uh, we'll need one more support uh, in the centre and we should be away. So here's the missing link as they say. Well I think that's looking quite reasonable. Um, obviously I do need one more support in the centre here so I'll have to make some kind of a bracket to come out but it seems to flow reasonably well and here we have the last little support bracket placed underneath that latest piece of track bed. Now it hasn't taken too long to temporarily lay some track on that track bed and as usual it's Pico Cloak Code 100 and hopefully you agree that these sweeping curves coming off the helix is rather attractive. All I've done is screwed the track to the track bed using the Pico miniature screws and done a little bit of a botch on the wiring just so we could get a couple of trains running to make sure that it works properly. I haven't connected it up to the main boards yet because that will take a great deal of thought because I'm going to do it in two different power districts and along with block detection we'll, that will have to wait for another day. But as we look back down the track bed hopefully you can see the effect that I was after. I'm unsure whether on the finished item you'll see this curve here because somewhere around here these tracks are going to emerge from a tunnel entrance because um, I had intend to cover the whole of the helix um, in the scenic. So obviously you've got the, the Barnstable type station there and then um, a small goods yard and then the hill would come down here and cover this area so obviously these tracks then would come out of a tunnel mouth and then rise up towards the viaduct. Well it's about time we had a test really so we've now got Falcon underneath pulling that uh, train of 10 coaches so we'll send that up at speed 50 and it's a much more capable loco than that little warship it really is. And then back at the top here we've got the, uh, the original warship so we'll send that one down.
I am a little cautious on the warship because that downline really hasn't been tested very much. But here comes Falcon. we would hold it there normally because that's exactly where the stop mark would be for the signals. And eventually our warship gets back to the fiddle yard. Well I think it's fair to say that at long last we are eventually getting somewhere. So what have I left to do next? Well there's some extensive trials to be done with the Helix, but it looks pretty good. Um, they, I'm still getting the uncoupling as the trains back down, but that's because you're pushing um, drop link couplings and that's just not the way to do it. I mean, tension lock couplings are dreadful and they need to go. So I'm sure that problem will go. Um, and the other thing I've learned is before you put any stock back on the, on the rails is to check the back to backs um, of the wheels because it, the, the Helix is, is quite quite unforgiving to be perfectly honest so I've got to do that. Now this structure that I made over the last couple of days is only just screwed in so I can easily take this piece out and obviously the, the, the track isn't in there's no track bed or anything and I can move on to have a look at the the station layout for Barnstable station whether I can do that next because of the shortage of materials with a lockdown I'm, I'm unsure about that but there's lot, lots, lots left to do. Um, I did mention about having a different um, power district down here running off a booster. So I've got that to sort out. So you've got um, you know, a, a one power system running the, uh, the lower level, the uh, fiddle yard area and the helix, and then the other one, the other main power district running the upper levels and perhaps the other helix. So these are the things that I need to sort out. Exciting times and uh, hopefully you're enjoying them. The use of this digital spirit level has been a complete bonus, it really has. Although before you leap out and buy one, it's worth noting that it doesn't go up in, um, in tiny proportions. So in the percentage area, if you're at 1.99, I'm sure I can't do it by hand, it then leaps up to 2.34. But as you'd expect, these are minute little amounts and I imagine there's a, a wiper and a, a sweeper blade in there that, that uh, how, it, how it sort of performs. But I definitely wouldn't want to do without it. A um, bit of a change coming up for the channel now and that is I'm going to try and produce a video, um, four, three videos every four weeks. So there should be a layout update, a how-to, a layout update and then a gap. And that's the way I wish to progress through the springtime. So we'll see how um, that works out time-wise. And as usual, summing up, I would like to thank my patrons. And if you'd like to be one, there should be a button there. I am extremely grateful to you. And of course, the people who donate to the channel, there should be a button there to subscribe. And if you're not a subscriber, then please think about it. It is free. There is no subscription fee. And there should be a video here and here. And I'll see you in two weeks time. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye.